Okay, this is a very special project of mine. This is a one chip, five component AM radio transmitter that you can hear on your own radio. This chip is a microcontroller. It's an AT Tiny 44A microcontroller. But this method is so simple that it can be used on virtually any microcontroller. The radio signal is actually generated from the microcontroller, amplified by this MOSFET here, and then fed into a very small vertical antenna like this. I have an example radio here, and I'm going to turn it on. And the frequency is around 1 megahertz. That should be about a thousand kilohertz. So that's the audio that it's sending. This chip is generating Morse code and generating the radio signal and sending the Morse code over that radio signal, and you can hear it on this radio. which I agree with. So, you have to get the frequency just right and then it's very clear. Also, this is a very small antenna. If I touch the antenna and make my body an antenna, it gets a little bit clearer as well. If you use a very long run of wire, it would be an even better signal. So, let's back up a minute. How does this work and how can you build one? Well, I drew a schematic here that shows my chip. And before I go into the details of this, I'd like to mention a couple things. First of all, the fuses of the microchip let you control some different options that aren't necessarily software options, but more hardware options. There are three fuses that you have to change off of the default fuses for most of the small Atmel chips. The first one is to uh, change the R internal RC oscillator to 8 MHz, which that might be the default setting, I'm not sure. Just make sure we're using the internal RC oscillator at 8 MHz. And then enable the divide by 8 option. This will take the internal RC oscillator, divide it by 8, so now the clock is running at 1 MHz. The next thing you do is enable the CKOUT, or the clock out feature. This will generate 5 volt square waves on the pin that's designated as the, uh, as the clock output. Now, I'm using the ATtiny 44A, just because I happen to have them. I pull up the data sheet in the pin diagram, and you can see we have CKOUT right here. So I know that pin 5 is where the clock output is going to be. I can demonstrate that if I clamp on with my oscilloscope. So I'm going to clamp ground, and then I'm going to look at pin 5. And this is what the image looks like on an oscilloscope. So we have 5 volt square waves, and the frequency is exactly 1 megahertz. If we were just to listen to this on the radio, it would be silent. Because an AM radio uses the amplitude modulation, a steady radio tone represents silence. Now if you vary the amplitude of this signal, you will get some audio. So that's what we do here. So how do we modulate the signal? We take it from a steady carrier tone, these 5 volt square waves, and want to do some amplitude modulation. We want to change the peak-to-peak -peak voltage and change it very quickly in an audio tone. So what I do is, in software, I have a pin designated as an audio pin, and I just turn it on and off very quickly so it would make an audio tone. If I attached the output of pin 6 to a speaker, we could hear the tone, and it would be beeping some Morse code. So what I do is I feed the power out of the audio signal through a decoupling capacitor, and then I put it into the uh, drain of my MOSFET. Very simply, this MOSFET acts like a switch. When the clock is set to high, this point here is shorted to ground, and when the clock is set to low, this point here floats at about 5 volts. This acts as a small amplifier because the output here has more power than the small amount of power coming out of this pin here. So already we just go from a low power 5 volt square wave to a higher power 5 volt square wave, and now by adding a little bit of audio level here, it's 5 volts plus and minus a little bit, because when we, go, when we send pulses through a decoupling capacitor, it, uh, it adds and subtracts the voltage, so 
It's five volt square waves, plus and minus a little bit of audio tone. That gets decoupled and goes to the antenna. So in this way, we can modulate the signal. If I clamp on the output after the amplifier, I'm going to look right here and look at what our antenna is seeing. I'm going to turn on the audio. So you can see we have a combination of 5 volt or large and smaller waves. If I zoom out, Now you can see the audio level. I'm going to turn this down. So these are the audio level tones. It's just sending square waves in an audio level. If I back up a little bit more, you can see it's it's uh, pretty low frequency audio. And if I zoom in a lot, those audio tones, you can see the uh, radio tones again. So this is how I'm generating the tones, sending it through the small wire antenna, and then we're hearing it on the radio. So it's a very simple way to add some radio functionality that any home radio can tune into. And there are a lot of possibilities for this. Uh, the easiest one I thought of is to attach maybe a temperature sensor to this device. Believe it or not, the at 44 a has an internal temperature sensor, so you don't even need an external device. But however you want to do it, you could attach a temperature sensor and have it send temperature information wirelessly, just having it sent to a radio. You can tune into it and listen in some Morse code or some other method. And it's a, a very simple way to have a microcontroller send radio that you can tune in with a commercial, just a regular home radio. One other note I want to make is that the power supply has to be very clean. And I do this here by adding a decoupling capacitor between the power supply rail, the plus, and the ground. I initially did it without this, and I was getting a lot more noise, and I finally put it in there, and it greatly improved the signal. So if you decide to replicate it, be sure to include the decoupling capacitor. Details can be found at my website, swharden.com. And if you have any questions, send me an email, swharden at gmail.com. Good luck.